from Deeper Rods, and this is I'm Jeffrey Bennett. We have Brock Benson and Dallas Gregory, and we are going to be talking to you about Verizon's business plan and strategies. Brock's going to start us off with a discussion of strategy. Okay, uh, Verizon's business strategy could be classified as a focus differentiation strategy, which uh, can be defined as when a company targets a certain segment or niche of a market and customizes its offering to the need of that particular market. Benefits for using this uh, kind of strategy allow for a brand to uh, charge premium prices, uh, that it establishes brand loyalty, and also uh, at least having a strong uh, customer base. The five forces for Verizon, uh, the first one, intensity of rivalry is strong. There are many uh, providers for cell phone carriers, and their main, uh, Verizon's main competitor is AT&T, uh, and these two corporations uh, dominate the wireless market and are constantly at war with each other over who will be the top supplier. Uh, bargaining powers of suppliers is moderate. They have many suppliers that they can uh, obtain their materials from with lots of varieties to choose from. Uh, bargaining power of buyers is uh, relatively strong because many there are many communications providers and uh, they're all striving to uh, have the lowest prices and best uh, plans for everybody. Third new entry is weak for two main reasons, uh, the legal requirements and start and the high st uh, startup costs. Network coverage, satellite installation for communication services are all extremely uh, expensive. And the threat of substitutes is moderate. There are high pressure from other competitors in the industry, but Verizon has diversified enough so that many uh, they offer many products and services in many different market segments. Okay, the driving forces uh, are of uh, Verizon would be Competitive marketplace, AT&T, T-Mobile, and Sprint are classified as the main competitors in the wireless communications industry, with AT&T being the largest threat. For Verizon to remain a successful competitor in their industry, they must not only continue to provide top quality services and products, but also find uh, ways to offer more innovative goods and services at attractive prices. Uh, increase of wireless technology is another uh, driving force for this industry. Um, the prevalence of wireless technology touches almost every aspect of our lives today. Being on the cutting edge of this new wave of information is sure to lead, lead to success for almost any business today. Uh, increase of communication between countries. The flow of communication between different countries is at an all-time high. Providing reliable and inexpensive ways for people in different countries to communicate with each other is going to prove who real competitors in the industry are. And being able to harness this new technology and improve upon it will be an asset for Verizon. And then finally, the uh, decrease in landline usage. Uh, more and more people are going to cell phones these days, and landlines are uh, becoming obsolete. So, uh, being able to deal with that will surely be uh, important for Verizon. So, now is Dallas. Okay, I'm Dallas Gregory, and I'm going to talk about the key success factors. Um, a few of the key success factors are obviously on the board, but Hotspots being the main one, offering more Wi-Fi hotspots through their cell phone, but also offering something that's a little bit cheaper. Um, phones with wireless abilities, um, wireless abilities being Wi-Fi, uh, hands-free technology, offering phones that also integrate with the car audio so that you don't have to use your hands, um, Bluetooth headsets, stuff that makes driving safer. Um, increased internet speeds, um, this is something that Verizon has started with Fios, um, getting towards more of the fiber optics and getting away from the copper wires. Um, continuous advancements of technology, just continue to broaden your spectrum. Um, and I'll pass this over to Jeffrey. I'll be talking about the internal environment analysis. I did a SWOT analysis. Uh, for Verizon Strength, they have the big, uh, largest market share in the cell phone industry. They own 31.3% of all wireless users of the market. They have a strong customer base. They have 100 million subscribers per month. Offers an all-in-one product. You can get your cable, internet, and cell phone all-in-one product from Verizon. Also, they have strong employee morale. They over, have over 100,000 people employed and then a strong service and they also ranked number one from consumers in cell phone use. Some of the weaknesses they have is price which they're 20 percent higher than Sprint and AT&T on the average bill. They're highly focused on Americans 
global global coverage and costs are too high. You always hear about people going out of town and ha coming back with these astronomical bills. And then fixed line communications is almost a, a dying breed of the way to work, except for, uh, for Theos, which I'll talk about later. Now we'll talk about the opportunities Verizon has. They're looking to expand into other countries. They also are looking to have expansion in mobile networking and businesses. The wireless demand for consumers is huge. You don't see almost everyone has a cell phone these days, and people are starting to live without, or can't live without them. And then uh, Fios and cloud storage. Cloud storage is one of the big things that I've read. Most people aren't having enough memory for all the photos and stuff, and Verizon's getting into the business of having cloud storage for their consumers. Some of the Verizon's threats are the intensity of rivalry. There's so many competitors out there, AT&T, T-Mobile, and then the, you also have the people with the, uh, the companies with the plans that don't have contracts. Unlimited plans by competitors. T-Mobile has a plan where you get unlimited minutes, data, and text for $35 a month which Verizon doesn't offer anything like that. And then uh, the wireless abilities on all devices. Uh, people are starting to get iPads and iPods that have wireless capabilities that people can use for, to surf the internet instead of using the data on their phones. Now we're gonna go back to the financial analysis with Dallas. Okay, um, the financial analysis for Verizon, um, the gross profit margin from 2010 to 2014 grew um, by an increase of 25.7%. The Verizon uh, net profit margin also had a 75% increase from 2010 to 2014. Um, return on assets in 2014 was at 4.08%, while in 2010 it was at 1.13%. Um, and the return on equity saw a major increase from 2014. Um, it was at 3% and in 2010 and in 2014 it was at 7.4%. Okay. okay, the strategic concerns for Verizon are going to be the competitive marketplace. Like, as I said earlier, they have many competitors and they're all striving to uh, have the lowest prices and the best plans for their uh, customers. Uh, Affordable pricing, with, uh, as Je Jeff mentioned earlier, uh, the unlimited plans and unlimited data that other uh, cell phone companies are uh, offering. Non-consistent operating expenses, that uh, will tie into uh, the landlines. Uh, when that, uh, when they, if they decide to divest all that stuff, the landline uh, technology, then their operating expenses should smooth out and then Consumer expectations, uh, technology is always changing and the, the constant advancements of technology, that's going to play in for uh, them, how they're going to deal with that. Now I'll let Jeff take it over to the recommendations. We, come up, we came up with four recommendations for Verizon. The first recommendation we have is for them to expand their services into France, Spain, and Germany. I know you think this is a random three countries, but we cross-reference the top 10 countries with the most disposable income with the top 10 countries that have the most wireless usage and those three were both on each list. Therefore, both of these companies are going to have enough money to, for a new plan and look to use wireless technology even more. Our next recommendation would be to cre create an unlimited individual plan for $55 per month. The reason we said $55 per month is because T-Mobile offers one for $35, which Verizon has a lot better service than T-Mobile, so they can charge a more premium price. And then AT&T Chart has that plan for $60 a month, and they're the biggest competitor for Verizon. Therefore, if you cut them just a little bit, you can still maintain market share and have a cheaper price. Our next recommendation would be to develop a more efficient operations process and one of the ways you can do this is by divesting on landlines like Brock said. Once we get rid of those we can focus more on our future technologies, the expansion to Germany, France, and Spain and then creating the unlimited, unlimited plan. And then also to develop um, FIOS further 
and uh, look to partner with Google or Apple with their products. One of the main things that FIOS does is it also ties into the all-in-one product. You can stream all of your media through FIOS. And I said to partner with Google or Apple because they already have products that are streaming. So for example, Google has a Chromecast and Apple has an Apple TV. If Verizon partners with Apple and then lets customers run FIOS through Apple TVs, they can go on there and use Verizon data while they are using the FIOS service which generates revenue for Verizon. And the same thing for Google Chromecast. But that's all we've got here. So I hope you liked it. Thank you.